Mbak dimulai aja. Saya ya, Mbak. Ya. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to University of Science and Computer Technology Stecom University in Semarang, Indonesia. For the webinar international event, the role of digital based innovative business to improve competitiveness. First of all, let me introduce myself first. My name is Novita, and I will be hosting you for today event. And now, please let welcome our special guest for today. Welcome to the Honorable Dr. Joseph Teguh Santoso, as a rector of Stecom University from Indonesia. To the Honorable Dr. Unang Atlison as a Dean of Diploma Program for Stecom University in Indonesia. To the Honorable Dr. Amenasib Hatullah as a Assistant Professor and Cluster Head of Marketing from Karachi Institute of Economy and Technology from Pakistan. To the Honorable T.S. Dr. Farah Wida Moh Abu Bakar. As a senior lecturer or head of industrial lean kega section from University Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia, to the Honorable T.S. Dr. Mohsaiful Iswan bin Saadon, as a senior lecturer faculty of maritime study from University Technology Mara Malaysia. And the last but not least, also to the Honorable guests and audience. Before we begin, I have a few housekeeping notes here. Today's session being live streamed on Universitas Tecom YouTube channel. And for today even, we will start Indonesia National Anthems and continue with the opening speech by Rector Dr. Joseph Teguh Santoso, but represented by Dr. Unang Atlison. And we will start for main event presentation by our special guest today and continue with Q&A session and time for picture and closing. Further for the square of this morning agenda, we will sing our national anthems. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand up and Miss Febri, you can start for Indonesia national anthems. Thank you. Thank you very much for all audience and please have a seat for now. Ladies and gentlemen, first now we will invite to the stake the most responsible person for the conduction of this skill international event for give an opening speech for Dr. Unang Atlison as a dean of Stecom University. The time is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Novita. Is my voice clear? Yes, it's clear. Sure. Yeah, thank you. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Let me introduce myself. My name is Dr. Una Alison. 
and Honorable Rector of Stockholm University, Dr. Yusef Teku Santoso, and uh, Honorable our speaker today, and also the Honorable all students and all audience. First of all, I would like to express my guarantee to our God and bless and mercy that we could assembly in this international webinar today. Ladies and gentlemen, my first take this occasion to pay tribute to all of the audience of this webinar, international even, with the title, The Rule of Digital-Based Innovative Business to Improve Competitiveness, held by Stecom University and collaboration with Karasi Institute of Economic and Technology and University Kuala Lumpur and University Malaysia Terengganu. I would like to say thank you very much to all speakers that you will present insightful ideas according to your field of experience in this reputation. And it is a great pleasure to welcome all of you to this webinar. I believe that our speakers today will improve our knowledge and experiences of all in participants and provide significant scientific contribution. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope through this webinar, international event, we can get more information about the role of digital based in innovative business to improve competitiveness. To conclude, I would like to extend my appreciation to the International Affairs Organization of Stecom University for making this webinar. And finally, I wish you to enjoy the webinar today. And I think enough. Thank you very much. And uh, the time uh, I back to Ms. Novita. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the conduction, Dr. Unang Atlison. And we will go to the main event for today for our audience. If you have any questions from the speaker, please add them in the chat and we'll be to answer some of the during the Q&A session after our presentation. And its presentation today will have about 30 minutes for the presentation. Now, let's please welcome our first presenter. Professor Dr. Ahmad Zainuri as a Head of Entrepreneurship Department from Stecom University in Indonesia. For Dr. Ahmad, the time is yours. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Novita. Wait a minute. <clears throat> Can you see my presentation, Ms. Novita? Yes, sure. Yes. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the Honorable Mr. Dr. Joseph Tegu Santoso as a rector of University of Stecom, and then the Honorable uh, Ms. Novita is a developer division at the University, and the Honorable uh, Mr. Dr. Una Akison as a in uh, our uh, university. Okay, the potential for empowerment of the I'm sorry, uh, okay. Mr. Uh, Ahmad. Okay. Uh, yes. Your voice is not clear because uh, signal. Okay. Bad signal. <laughs> In here, bad signal here. Okay, wait a minute. <clears throat> Pak mungkin bisa join pakai wifi yang khusus webinar. Khusus webinar ini ya? Ya, webinar 8 kali.
Is it working? Hello. Mungkin Bapak Soli kan bisa bantu ya di atas ya. And just a moment please for all audience. I think I guess from Professor Ahmad have a technical issue. So just a moment please. Halo, uh, halo. Mungkin bisa di rename dulu ya, Pak. Oke, okay. thank you, thank you. Nah, ini filenya gimana? Tak kirim ke sini ya? Sudah. Tak kirim ke WA. Uh -uh, sebentar. Bentar, bentar, bentar. Novita, aku kirim ini ya, Nox. Kirim ke Mbak filenya, Febri. Filenya, ke, ya. ke Mbak Febri aja nanti dibantu hmm. share screen. Oke, oke, siap, siap, siap. Febri rata simpen nomor ya, Pak. Novita. Novita, saya sudah kirim ke tempatmu, Novita. Enggak ada. Enggak ada, sebentar. Kirim ke saya saja, oh, Pak. Iya, iya. Siap, Febri. Wait a minute. Sudah tak kirim ke tempatmu, Mbak. Oh, sudah, sudah. Oke. Okay. Loading, 8 MB. Sudah. Oke, okay, Miss Febri, please help me to share our uh, my presentation. Sorry, apa ini? Ini terlihat, Mbak. Oke, okay, Miss Novita, Miss Febri, can you hear my voice? Yes. Okay, can I start now? Yes. Oke, okay. uh, good afternoon ladies and gentlemen. The Honorable Mr. Dr. Joseph Teguh Santoso as a rector Stekom University. And the Honorable uh, is Miss Novita Anggita Sari and Miss Febriana as a international affair division in Stekom University. And then uh, the Honorable Mr. Dr. Unang Aklison as a represent our rector Stekom University is today. Okay, I want to explain about my materials, uh, digital technology entrepreneur, the potential for empowerment of millennial business. Before I explain my presentation today, I want to introduce myself uh, first. Okay, Miss Febri. Bisa dibantu untuk 
Yes, this is my curriculum vitae. Okay, let me introduce myself. My name is Ahmad Zenuri. You can call me with Mr. Ahmad or Mr. Zenuri. Uh, I live at Kepundalan Kondal Central Java, Indonesia. My email uh, Ahmad Zenuri at stekom.ac.id. And then my educational background, period 2009 until 2013 as a bachelor degree of state administration at University of 17 August 1945 Semarang. And then period 2009 and 2015 until 2017 as master degree of human resource management at University of Stikubang Semarang. My professional experiences period July 2018 until January 2019 as a speaker academic national examination strategy and college admission selection at regional Central Java is Java and Bali in Yayasan Cipta Bangsa Foundation Strategian Central Java Indonesia. And then period May 2019 until Juni 2021 as an assistant manager of purchasing department and PT Saskras Indo Utama Tegal and then period 2020 until now as a lecturer and head of entrepreneurship study program at University of Computer Science and Technology Semarang or Stekom University. Okay, this is my overview yeah, uh, about digital technology entrepreneurship, the potential for empowerment of millennial business. A new phenomenon that has emerged in the world of entrepreneurship is entrepreneurship digital technology. This type of entrepreneurship can remove the boundaries of limitation resources and product scalability faced by entrepreneurs. Entrepreneur digital technology is starting to bloom, especially in universities and companies. The potential for developing millennial business with a triple helix model between government, companies, and universities through digital technology entrepreneurship. Okay, only universities, companies, and the government play an important role in developing the potential of millennial entrepreneurs. Okay, next, Ms. Webri. Yes, how does impact about digital technology entrepreneurship? Digital technology entrepreneurship has a tremendous impact of the words. Digital business that are built through internet networks such as Google, Facebook, or Microsoft, and etc. have been able to change the world and form communication pattern without geographical barriers. And then, Ms. Okay. Okay, digitalization also has an impact on the development of new entrepreneurs. The potential for new business development has increased due to opportunities for digitizing business brands and changing business from offline to online. The positive impact of digitalization on entrepreneurship also occurs in the form of promoting innovation, creating job opportunities, increasing productivity, but socially and economically so that it becomes a priority for governments in various countries. Okay, next. Okay, this is a uh, triple helix, yeah. triple helix method. Yeah, uh, this is digital entrepreneurship has also tracked business from millennial businessmen, especially in universities. However, the digital entrepreneurial uh, potential of millennial business certainly needs to be developed from various parties. Okay, parties that play three major role are the government, university, and industry. These three parties are the more uh, are the most conductive organization in developing innovation. The role of these three parties, which have been engagement, each other can actually cooperate with each other or are called triple helix between government, universities, and industry. Next. Oke, okay. digitalisasi uh, digital revolution. Oke, okay. digitalization has revolutionized all aspect of life. Digital revolution has changed uh, trans uh, transaction methods that were previously offline to digitalization online only by using gadget and internet network facilities can make everything is easier such as transportation and then social media, 
marketplace, delivery service, online streaming, buying and selling transaction, and etc. Okay, next. Yes, look at the picture about growth of social media platform in Indonesia. This is a resource from dataindonesia.id from VR Social. And then this is a number of active social media in Indonesia from 20, uh, from 2015 until 2022 uh, continues uh, increasing from year to year. Okay, uh, we start January 2014, yeah. 2014 January is uh, the number active of social media in Indonesia is uh, 62 million. And then in January 2017, uh, number of active uh, social media in Indonesia increased to be 106 million. And then uh, January 2020 increased again in 116 million. And then the January 2022 uh, increased until 191 million. Okay, next. Yes, this is a data growth of e-commerce social media platform, which is uh, from a resource, Ministry of Communication and Information Technology. The growth in value of e-commerce in Indonesia reached 78%, the highest in the world, while Mexico country in the second ranks with a growth value of 5 percent. This condition indicates that the electronic trading business had good, has good economic value, so it must be utilized by business actor, especially for micro, small, and medium enterprises, or MSMES. Okay, next. Yes, this is a definition from uh, digital entrepreneurship. Digital entrepreneurship is a subcategory of entrepreneurship in which organization or traditional activities that move cyclically are digitized so that traditional entrepreneurship change in the form of new business in the digital era, both in product distribution and business location, not only about the product, but uh, also about distribution and business location. Okay, Ms. Fabri, next. Yes, this is key of entrepreneurship. Okay, if you want to be uh, entrepreneurship uh, millennial, you you must uh, be innovat innovative, yeah? You must be creativity, collaborate, teamwork, integrity, and networking. You must be innovative, combine knowledge and ideas to get new value for a product, process, or services, and then you can observe, imitate, and modify. And then uh, creativity, you can create something new, and never found before. Collaboration, work together to generate ideas and solve problems together. And then teamwork, work together towards a common vision and mission. And integrity about commitment, honesty, and consistency. And then the last uh, about networking, expand the network and share experience with the other. Okay, next. Yes, this is characteristic of the millennial generation. Okay, if you want to be millennial generation, you must be active, uh, have characteristic uh, such as technology literate, and then you must uh, really on search engines, and you interested with multimedia, and then you learning by doing, uh, by doing, and the last, uh, you must create internet content. Okay, next. Yes, this is entrepreneurship by the future with the present value. By the future with the present value. So you can read the opportunity. You can create the opportunity and then you must uh, decide 
the results of oriented and you must uh, be characteristic of discipline and then you must be detail and perfectionist about uh, the, the 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 preparation for the future with the entrepreneurship okay next yes this is essence of digital technology Okay, uh, if you want to uh, know about essence of digital technology, you must uh, uh, you must know about digital technology uh, at the first modeling the realities of life with more efficient, cheap or thrifty, and then fasting, and then wide range and for which and control or programs. And number two, you must creating possibilities or unlimited and number three you can change the way things work and the last you must changing life relationship okay next yes this is a differentiate about conventional customer and digital customer uh, if you want to be uh, the conventional customer you maybe you can uh, work in the mall and the uh, in the store and you can uh, see the directly the product and you can touch the product and etc this is conventional customer okay if you want to be digital customer next miss Febri. Yes, this is digital customer. <clears throat> A digital customer can everything more easier. You can shopping online from home, uh, and then you can uh, see the price, quality, uh, uh, advance uh, in the online shop, and then you can uh, see the review review from the customer uh, and this is a uh, review from customer can uh, make you decision about your finally to buying a product okay next yes this is z z m o t zero moment of trust decision making process before making a purchase Zero moment of trust is the consumer shopping behavior who make decision to buy without seeing the product directly. Okay, uh, this is uh, different about uh, conventional uh, digital uh, conventional customer because this is a uh, consumer uh, shopping behavior. Um, uh, they they want to buy uh, without the product uh, without seeing the product directly, but they conducted simple research by comparing reviews of a product from the other consumer as a reference from one product and the other product okay uh, start uh, about zero moment of trust uh, start uh, by stimulus stimulus about uh, potential customer want to buy and classify the product and then first moment of truth potential customer see the product directly through marketplace social media website e-commerce and etc and then the second moment of truth potential customer consumer have bought and tried the product or services and will determine their level of satisfaction and trust in the brand okay next yes how to be digital entrepreneur okay how to be digital entrepreneur you must have about mindset you must have about knowledge you must have about access and uh, and then you must uh, have a business model mindset about digital entrepreneur not just selling online not just and then uh, selling online but there are a lot of digital business opportunities that can be done prospective digital uh, digital entrepreneur must open up broad insights you must opening your insight uh, and mindset about digital entrepreneur and then knowledge each uh, digital platform has its own characteristic uh, such as uh, social media facebook instagram uh, tiktok 
for example, can become online shopping uh, platform. And then we visit to access, access to technology, hardware, internet connection, uh, ex expertise, and etc. is very important to digital entrepreneur. And the last piece model, a digital entrepreneur need to explore the best form of business model. A good business model is generally unique and difficult for competitors to imitate as well as being liked by consumers. Next. Yes, digital entrepreneur preparation. Okay, this is becoming a digital entrepreneur require careful preparation. There are several levels of preparation that must be met before starting a digital business. Okay, we start from uh, bottom until uh, okay until above yeah okay uh, number one preparation uh, about digital entrepreneur you opening a digital business means opening a business 24 7 24 hours a day and seven days a week seven days a week is waiter for customer 24 hours straight and one full week without even a day off. If Indonesia, the most popular is open 24 hours about opening a digital business. And number two, okay, level number two, you must be ready to respond to question and com uh, complaints. Okay, you uh, you must be respective about respond from question and complaints from your customer. And uh, the level next uh, must be ready to create a support system for customer because customer want to easier about how to buy uh, or sell the product with the support system. And uh, number four, uh, number four the, uh, you must are ready for a safe and reliable pay payment method. You can uh, space for method payment for the customer and etc. And the last, uh, you must ready to provide quality good, uh, goods, quality goods as promise. Okay, next. Yes, summary. Digital entrepreneurship is a phenomenon that is growing today. Many digital entrepreneurship are in universities and have a lot of potential for develop, able to analyze information competition for market needs. The existence of a digital entrepreneur is certainly becoming great potential for the government, universities, and industry. Uh, pick, uh, between three parties, government, universities, and industries. The government's role in making regulation that encourage the formation of 1,000 startups every year is of course not only through regulation, not only through regulation from the government, but however, the government also needs to act as mediator for cooperation between universities and industry. One part universities, they have the potential for research and innovation development, but the industry has special funding resource, but is weak in this carry out research development and technological innovation. The role the, the government as mediator to bring two sides together the potential to create digital entrepreneur collaboration between the government uh, about regulation, universities about research and innovation development, and then uh, industries about special funding. Okay, next. Yes, millennial uh, obstacle in entrepreneurship. Number one, com uh, comfort zone. They, uh, they want to uh, sign out from comfort zone. Okay, number two, they fear of uncertainty and they not support. They confuse how to start. They talk about your own abilities. They have experiences hearing the other people 
failed in the business. They haven't found a suitable business pattern yet. They too many considerations about the business to be run. And the last, feel like building a business network first. Okay, then how to solve it? Okay, Miss Fabry, next. Then how to solve it? Then uh, next, Miss Fabry. Yes, this is about how to solve about uh, the uh, uncertainty uh, who, which which is uh, have uh, by uh, general uh, millennial millennial millennial, uh, millennial entrepreneurship in Indonesia. How to solve if number four, uh, number one yeah the first is strong determination and mentality to start, and number two start with your interest and talents. And number three, you must have target, focus, and be consistent. And number four, many learn from the story of a successful entrepreneurship. And number five, or the last, you must force yourself to start and do it now. Okay? Do it now or never. Okay. Okay, next, Miss Fabri. Okay, thank you so much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, uh, this is about my presentation, uh, digital entrepreneurship. Yeah, uh, encourage uh, general uh, millennial, millennial entrepreneurship with uh, digital entrepreneurship. Uh, maybe. I want to take uh, offer hand offer. I, I want to hand offer this uh, uh, this event next with Miss Novita. Okay, Miss Novita, thank you. Thank you so much for Dr. Ahmad Zainuri for okay, the wonderful presentation. Okay. And then we will go to the next speaker. This is Dr. Amena Sibgatulo as an assistant professor and cluster head of marketing from Karachi Institute Economy Technology from Pakistan. Yeah, for Dr. Amena, the time is yours. Thank you. Is my voice clear? Yes. Okay. So just, I would like to introduce myself. Um, I am associated with the Keith University as Yes, is my voice clear? Hello. Yes, clear. Okay, okay. So uh, basically, I was just introducing myself. I'm associated with the Keith University as assistant professor and the cluster head of marketing at the College of Management Sciences. Uh, so I, now today I will uh, would like to discuss on like how we can transform the digital based startup into a brand, right? So we will be discussing uh, today, the topic of our discussion would be like the framework for the analysis of the business plan, 
then the opportunity evaluation considerations and the process and then the concentration process that how we can uh, move ahead when we are in the entrepreneurship then introduction to the branding its components then the research best practices positioning statement the naming processes of the brands and then the critical design strategy okay so the first thing that we should be very concerned with like uh, we must be aware or um, we can must um, be telling the millennials especially that what's the difference that exists between the branded business and the generic business because um, because what we actually found that uh, generic business is usually like the generic business is usually like the you can say if we are talking about the fast food business so it is the generic uh, business that we are doing of the clothing you know many other um, different kind of businesses that we have but when it comes to the branded business so it is becoming a brand when we are giving it some name similarly it also happens in the uh, when it comes to the digitalized uh, startups likewise we have the different applications we have the retail outlets that we found on the um, e-commerce or you can say on the websites likewise we have the retail outlets once we are giving it to some brand name like the amazon or the um, you can say the other kind of um, olx and uh, etc so it is becoming the branded business then what is the value addition and how well you can be added to the generic product because uh, what we actually found that um, being an entrepreneur um, we must be adding some value into that business right and then we have to identify the best uh, we have to identify and we have to be very much clear in order to make the millennials aware about the difference between these kind of businesses that we have like apple no android microsoft intel though the nature is same but what we actually do and that we have to identify and highlight the difference to the millennials okay then comes the business model canvas similarly in the um, and when it comes to the digitalized world uh, this uh, business model canvas this model canvas also works likewise for the um, for the digital startup we should be having the key partners and the key activities key resources then what is our uvp that is a unique value proposition what unique value we have added and then the customer relationship we have to maintain then it then the channels that we are following then the customer segments we have to identify we have to define the complete cost structure and then the revenue um likewise when it comes to the digital platform as the previous speaker was highlighting about the digital startups so definitely um there we must be having the several key partners as well um for the digital uh, for even for the uh, e-commerce or the digital business then the uh, key resource yes all right is my voice clear yes me okay thank you then the customer segments we have to define but when it comes to the digital startups mass ma masses are there to whom we are serving basically then the design thinking canvas in which we have these blocks likewise the people the challenges that we have to face the storytelling problem solutions vision and impact that if we are coming uh, up with the digital uh, based platforms
from the chat GBT that we have now this chat. Now, likewise, this chart GBT. Yes, uh, so I was just giving the example of the chart GBT. Now, chart GBT is basically, is, it is just a complete, uh, you can say, an application that is facilitating the masses across the globe. Now, definitely, it has been backed up um, by the proper vegetarian solution that they have identified. Um, through the surveys. Okay, then comes the brand. So what basically a brand is, it is all about the name, term, symbol, and sign. Uh, that is, that basically facilitate us to recognize the owner or the uh, source of that brand. It's an intangible asset that basically gives the recognition to the product or a service, which is quite important when it comes to the brand. And understanding the brand, so what we see that a brand is basically the uh, set of the mental associations which are basically in the customer's mind and they are the intangible asset for the company and then and then we can say that the brand is among the most valuable asset of the company right and it also influences the buyers because no matter even if it is a digital startup or the physical startup we have to give it some name we have to give it some recognition and then the brand versus product so if we see the brand or the service, you can say, if we are going with the techno, tech, technopreneurship, technology-based startups there as well, we have to, now it's a complete service that we are providing to the customers. And then also we have the products because on those websites, uh, we are basically facilitating the customer with the tangible product. Then basically we have to highlight, we have to see that what is the importance of the brands. Uh, to the consumers. Likewise, they can easily identify the source of the product. It also reduces the risk. Like for example, if we are um, uh, now Amazon.com is one of the tech-based startup. So if we see that whenever we are placing some order, we are satisfied with the quality because we believe uh, in that brand that they were going to deliver us the best quality product, whatever we were going to place the order. Then we have to be, very, as the entrepreneur or as the marketer, we have to be very well aware of the customer-based brand equity. No matter it is a service or a product, it is a digital, um, you can say the digital startup, still it has its own brand equity, the brand equity that it has. Likewise, the Microsoft is there, Intel is there, and much more. Some kind of clothing uh, brand is there that is completely operating online. So it has its own brand equity which has been formed uh, on the basis of the customer perspective, the, the knowledge that they have about you. So it has different components, likewise the differential effect that it holds on the customer's mind, then the brand knowledge, and the knowledge that the customers have about your particular service, then the choice of those websites, choice of the, um, you can say that tech-based startups, and then comes the positioning that how you have positioned yourself in the mind of the targeted audience. That is basically the brand positioning. So positioning is not what you do to a product. In fact, it is that what you are doing with the mind of the customer, right? Or a consumer, <coughs> that is what it is important. That how you are placing yourself in the um, mind of the customer. So what we see that the well-positioned brand product is uh, that which is considered as the best. And positioning may not be permanent because we have to change it uh, certain times because they, even the services, even the tech-based startup, they need to reposition themselves. Because once the customer has stopped uh, placing orders on your website, definitely you have to revisit that what is the main issue that is coming or what is the pain point of the customer on which you can, um, uh, after going to the thorough survey, you are improving the performance of that website. You are improving the performance of that uh, tech-based startup. All right. So um, in conclude, in conclusion, I can say that uh, uh, like uh, in a 
in this era, in this era, when we actually see this the millennials and the Gen Z, um, as the world is changing quite fast, the certain preferences and trends are changing quite fast, and the world is moving more towards the, uh, or you can say certain changes are occurring. <clears throat> Yes, I would like to hand over it to Novita. Thank you so much for Dr. Amena. Thank you so much for Dr. Amena uh, for wonderful presentation. And then we will go to the next speaker, TS Dr. Farah Mida Moh Abu Bakar as a senior lecturer or head of industrial linkage section from University Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. For Dr. Farah Wahida, the time is yours. Thank you. All right. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, all right. So before I proceed, I will share with you my screen first. Okay, just a moment. All right. Okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, Assalamualaikum and very good afternoon uh, to all participants uh, in, in this international webinar titled The Roles of Digital-Based uh, innovat Innovation okay, uh, Towards the Digitization. Okay. I'm Dr. Farah Wahida Muhammad uh, from Malaysian Institute of Information Technology, University Kuala Lumpur. Um, we'll share my, I will say that, will share my points and maybe my views okay on this topic okay uh, currently i'm a head of section um a head of section uh, industrial linkages uh, which uh, in this section we uh, we are more focused on the industry engagement and also uh handling a premier digital tax institution but actually UNIKL uh, we just uh, received uh, an award okay from MDAC uh, we just have a PDTI status which is premier digital tax institution which is um, to get that award okay we have to comply few criteria uh, including number of students that we must have more than 2000 students and our curriculum itself must be uh, must have an industry standard. So having met that, uh, ha having met those uh, criteria, UNIKL MIT uh, has been identified as uh, having uh, tertiary education models that successfully produce uh, quality talents for digital technology career and graduates uh, who become industry ready. So uh, I would say that uh, my point here is more on uh, sharing. Uh, our experience okay uh, with other university on how uh, we educate and we share our experience uh, I mean how we we come up with our own models and maybe the point itself is to uh, more on the sharing uh, the the environments especially the innovation part in the business so um before I proceed with my uh, slide presentation here um i want to explain on how china okay uh how china economy has been able to recover okay uh from the impact of covid 19 in 2020 in 2020 how they recover because they have a very uh digital uh they, they proceed to the G digital economy even uh, various literature review, I'm sure that the first speaker also have uh, explained on the uh, how the digitalization is really helps the business, uh, especially on the entrepreneur, right? Uh, and then uh, the second speaker also talk about how the business model canvas uh, really helps in identifying the uh, roles of uh, 
good business okay towards uh, to come up with the uh, relevant business in the market so I'll, uh, here I'll, I'll more explain on the how we can um, my views is on how we can use the uh, technology itself okay as an intelligent business in order to come up with a, a good digital digitalization business so uh, you can see from my slide here uh, we have uh, I'm not I'm not saying that this is the only one but uh, my views is more on how this will help uh, in order to highlight certain uh, criteria that I think is important, okay? And the views, for example, the first one, uh, the strategic uh, planning, okay? I will talk about the strategic planning. And then uh, we will look into the, how the administration system could help into the intelligent business itself. And then the communication uh, system, Okay, and then the fourth one is the logistic system. And the fifth uh, point is about the internet uh, of things. My views here is, uh, regarding the, for example, the strategic planning, to have a very good innovative, uh, I mean, the innovative business to improve your competi competitiveness, you must start with a good strategic planning. Okay, to have a very good strategic planning in business, I would suggest that try to implement the enterprise resource planning or ERP system, where uh, in the ERP system, uh, it can be a data integration. Okay, we will focus on data integration and then uh, we can do performance tracking. Okay, and uh, by having the ERP also, we can do some forecasting. Okay, so actually there's a lot of uh, another features that were involved in the ERP itself. But uh, as for data integration, uh, by having the system, ERP system, we can integrate, for example, in your business, you have CRM, customer relationship management, you have supply chain management, or maybe you have other financial uh, system, for example. Actually, we can integrate that. So by having the ERP system, you can integrate all the data so it will save your time and it will save costs in terms of costs. And then uh, by having that ERP system, okay, it's strategically, it will help you in uh, doing your performance tracking, okay, in order to make sure that how this other system uh, work, okay, and how this uh, other system is not good uh, in functioning, for example, so we can do some performance tracking. And definitely by having the ERP itself, we can do some forecasting. Um, I'm saying that forecasting is very important because we, uh, as a business owner, definitely you want to make sure that you have some competitive uh, information okay, with your competitors. So that's why you need to focus what kind of strategy that you will do next, okay? And what is the um, latest trends in the market that will help you to uh, doing your strategic planning, okay? So that's one. And then when we talk about the administrative uh, system, okay? So in the administrative system, let me change the color here. Okay, I would say that, okay, by having the administrator, uh, administration system, I would suggest that uh, to be to be a competitive, you must have a cloud computing, okay? For having a cloud computing, what's the benefit of having cloud computing? Okay, we can do scalability, okay, where cloud computing allows for the easy scaling of resources such as computing power and storage as need for the administration. Uh, system change okay it can be scalable and then instead of that uh, we can also by having a cloud computing is easy accessibility okay I'm sure that uh, the first speaker are talking about 24 7 um, shopping right uh, so by having a cloud computing definitely you can have a accessibility Okay, if your company have that, definitely you are very competitive in the market because you're, you are 24-7, okay, in the market online. Okay, uh, instead of that, um, by having cloud um, uh, computing also, we are looking into the cost saving. Okay, so you, don't know, you do not need any um, physical uh, storage or physical store, 
Okay, you can have just have everything online. Okay, so it's really make you competitive and you really can save costs in terms of that. And um, another good uh, benefit of having a cloud computing is about automated uh, updates. Okay, it's an automated uh, update. Okay, uh, I'm sure that you have experience using TikTok or Shopee or maybe in um, Indonesia, the most uh, popular platform is a Tokopedia, if I'm not mistaken, right? Uh, Tokopedia Shopee. because I, uh, uh, yeah, Shopee also. So I'm sure that every transaction you have made on the Shopee, for example, the seller will get the notification immediately. And that's why. Uh, it will uh, help the shoppers, the seller itself, and also the buyer to get a very good uh, fast uh, item and et cetera, right? So by having a cloud computing, yes, it can be auto uh, uh, automatically uh, updates in terms of that. Okay, um, another highlight point is about communication system. I, I'm sure also uh, the first speaker also mentioned about the uh, social um, uh, about the using the social media, right? Okay, but my point here, we are using a social CRM. Okay, social CRM is something like relates with the how you uh, interact with your customer. Okay, how you interact with your customer by using your social media. Okay, in Malaysia, we have a lots of uh, platform, and I'm sure Indonesia also have that, uh, such as uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram, TikTok, uh, even YouTube, WhatsApp, and etc. Right. So by having a good a social CRM, okay, uh, it will be uh, some platform for you to engage with your customer. The second speaker uh, talking about the business model canvas just now, which is one of the criteria, I, I mean, one of the blocks in the uh, business model canvas is a uh, customer uh, relationship, right? Uh, so this is how you make some engagement with your customer by having a social media, by using a social media. Why? Why Why? Why we must use a social media nowadays? Uh, I think the first speaker also mentioned about how the growth of... Um, the growth of uh, potential user of the uh, social media in, in Indonesia itself, right, is is very uh, decreasing. Uh, I mean, it's increasing. increasing. <laughs> okay, it's really increasing. Okay, um, so when we talk about the social media, um, my point is more on um, it, if you integrate your business, okay, uh, by having a social CRM, I, I would say focus on social CRM, so it will focus uh, with any platform of social media, yeah. So it will, uh, I would say that it will improve uh, customer engagement. Okay. Okay, and then it's also enhance uh, customer insight. Okay, I think this one is more. Uh, you can see if you familiar with the Facebook. Okay, so you can see inside in the in the Facebook, right? You can identify which time that customer really uh, make purchase. Okay, and you can uh, identify in which location that you have a very um, more customer that buy your product. So in Facebook, uh, we not we they have that kind of features that can help the seller to identify or to target the good strategy for their um, selling process. Okay, and then I would say that uh, by having social CRM also, uh, it will improve uh, customer service, customer service, yeah, um, because by having social media, when customer complains certain thing, uh, and definitely you will immediately uh, reply to the comments and etc. Right? give some review, uh, and then if the customer gives you a good review and it will give a good impact. Uh, I remember one of the, the speaker also mentioned about the uh, Z mods, right? Zero, what just now? I forgot. <laughs> uh, zero, yeah. Uh, zero moment of truth, right? Yeah. Uh, zero yeah. moment of truth on how uh, this kind of uh, uh, buyer, okay? Uh, never seen the, the item, but based on the review, based on yes. the positive feedback, it's really impact on how they make a uh, decision to purchase the item, right? Okay. Right, so um, in terms of logistic uh, system, okay, I will suggest that um, 
to have a competitive uh, business in the market, you must have a logistic system, which is you can incorporate with the RFID, you can cooperate with the QR code, or you can cooperate with the uh, fingerprint. Why I'm saying that? Because uh, by having this logistic system, uh, this technology is very uh, good in terms of tracking and identification. Okay, because uh, for example, you want to make sure that how many um, uh, item that left in the in the store, for example. Okay, so you you nowadays people are not going to the store to check one by one. They just refer to the system. So by having this kind of system is really help you to be competitive in the market. Okay, so um yeah, I'm sure that when we talk about logistic system, um, RFID is one of the technology. But nowadays, people are using uh, QR code, barcode, right? Uh, so I think maybe uh, QR. Uh, QR and et cetera, right? So it will really uh, help in terms of uh, to be a competitive in the market. And my last point is about um, to be a good, I mean, to be competitive in the market, you, have, you must have some innovation in your company itself, okay? Uh, you must utilize the Internet of Things, IoT, okay, uh, in your company. Even though your company is just small, small enterprise, or maybe you are just a startup entrepreneur, but by having this Internet of Things, okay, it's really help you to um, compete with the other, uh, to be competitive in the market. Okay, why I'm saying that? Because uh, by having the IoT, okay, definitely you can do some prediction, uh, predict prediction okay let me change the color here okay i would say that uh by having this one uh we can do some um predictive okay uh predictive maintenance okay okay for example if you implement certain uh, machine in your company for example so uh, by having IoT, okay, in your system, in your company, definitely, definitely you can just remote the maintenance, right? You, maybe you can just uh, monitoring the uh, the machine itself via your phones or via your um, yeah application, etc. So that's why I, I, I'm I, I'm suggesting um, you must incorporate the IoT in your uh company or business to make sure that you are competitive. Uh, instead of that, uh, by having IoT, you can create a smart factory, okay, uh, where everything is uh, uh, censored with all the devices, okay. So, for example, if there's uh, the one machine is not uh, functioning, so it will give some notification to either uh, devices, okay, and then the devices will will replace, okay, the the uh, malfunction uh, machine, for example, okay, uh, and then um, IoT also help in term of uh, supply uh, change management, okay, supply change management. Okay, so it will help in terms of uh, supplier, uh, I mean, the, the, the storage of the product itself, okay, uh, helping the supplier, identifying the supplier, notifying the supplier that they need to uh, replace or re replenish the product and etc. And also uh, give some notification to the client and etc. Uh, so it will help uh, your business to be competitive. So I'm highlighting few, uh, I mean, few point okay i'm not saying that this is the best but um, this will be the good uh, point okay if you want to be a competitive in digital market okay because when we talk a digital market is supposed to be or digital business you must have certain innovation tools okay to help you to be competitive so we can see here there will be a strategic planning which is we incorporate with the ERP itself. And then uh, administration system, for example, using a cloud computing. Uh, in terms of communication, definitely we want to communicate with our, uh, with our customer, okay, with our staff, etc. So I would suggest on the social CRM, social uh, customer relationship management, it will be uh, lots of platform in the market. 
uh, and then uh, in terms of logistic system, uh, you must have, a, for example, implement all the technology tools uh, that uh, will help you. Okay, in terms of tracking, in terms of uh, identifying, and etc. And the last one is about the Internet of Thing, uh, which is uh, how we can uh, use this kind of a technology or tools uh, to help us to uh, do some pre uh, uh, pre predict predictive uh, maintenance. Okay, uh, and having a smart factories in our organization and etc. So I hope that uh, my point here. Uh, could give some um, reflects and, uh, and uh, point okay, uh, for having a competitive in the market. So you really need to digitalize and you need, you need a tools uh, to make sure that you can be competitive in the market. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for Dr. Farah Avida. And thank you so much for a wonderful presentation. And then we will go to the last speaker. T.S. Dr. Muhammad Saiful Iswan bin Sadon as a senior lecturer faculty of maritime studies from University of Malaysia, technology from Malaysia. Yeah, for Dr. Saiful, the time is yours. Thank you. Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum. Salam sejahtera. Uh, Pertama-tamanya, saya mohon maaf ya Mbak Novita. Kamera saya ada masalah. Jadi saya nggak bisa untuk menunjukkan wajah saya. It's okay, sure. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, for my presentation, I will mix some English and also Malay because uh, I think uh, it's best for, for me to do that. And then... Um, Thank you so much for the top management of uh, Stackholm University for inviting me for this session this afternoon. And to uh, Mbak Dovita, terima kasih kerana memperkenalkan saya tadi. Jadi, uh, today I'm going to have my presentation entitled Service Quality for Digital Based Innovation Business as a Tool for Customer Satisfaction. So, a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Muhammad Saifurizwan bin Saadun. I'm uh, currently a senior lecturer for the Faculty of Maritime Studies, University of Malaysia, Terengganu. And I'm also the visiting research fellow for the Center of Excellence for Social Innovation and Sustainability, University of Malaysia, Perlis. And before this, I was with uh, University Kuala Lumpur, UniKL. So actually, I'm your colleague, Dr. Farah once upon a time. As for my area of interest, uh, quality of productivity improvement and also safety, health and environment. So number one, digital service quality. So what is actually digital service quality? So digital channels are an established means of assessing information and goods. The online marketplace has considerable economic significance in response to the pervasive use of technology the idea of the market space is used instead of traditional marketplace term. So sekarang ni kalau di Malaysia, saya rasa di Indonesia pun sama. Yang mana kita membeli belah di menggunakan online itu lebih mudah. Kan? Maksudnya tidak sesulit. Especially kalau semasa COVID-19 dahulu, uh, online shopping is much preferable rather than the actual uh, what do you call that uh, shopping due to the fact that it's this much safer and more reliable okay so a marketplace is where product and services exist as digital information and can be delivered through information based channel uh, it is estimated that the marketplace was worth around 430 billion that was in 2012 but i believe the uh, i mean the net worth now is double since it now is 2023 and in the uk the usage of google search and adwords generated at least 11 billion in 2014 and i believe it's now re already around 22 billion in 2023 okay However, market space competition is getting stiffer 
and ensuring that customers are satisfied with the online experience is critical in order to avoid loss of customers to the competitors. So in Malaysia, we have several uh, online based shopping uh, we call it portal. For example, we have Lazada, we have Shopee. So this is very important for this, uh, what you call that online portal to have the dominance in the market. Otherwise, they will be uh, left behind and significantly not uh, preferable by the customer. So that's why it is very important for them to ensure that the customer are satisfied so a colleague of mine always said, uh, for example, if an sh online shopper wish to have the product two days from the day that he or she purchased the products, so they expect at least uh, two days he or she will receive the product. But sometimes people expect the day before they buy the product, they already have the product. So... <laughs> I mean, uh, some customers, they are very demanding. So that's why it is very important for the, uh, what do you call that, uh, online shopping portals like this to have very, very good uh, customer service to ensure that the customer satisfaction are in high uh, for their company. Okay. One strategy open to digital marketers is to ensure repeat customer through offering a quality e-service that deliver customer satisfaction. In online, offline service research, the argument is that a satisfied customer is more inclined to return to a service outlet, to repurchase, to spread favorable uh, word of mouth, and to be less sensitive to price competition. So if the customer is satisfied with your service, with your product, definitely they will come again although sometimes we have we have competitors and so on and so forth but at the end of the day when the customer are happy with your product or services they will tend to come again and buy again from you repurchase and they tend to actually spread a good uh, what you call that information about your company for example company a providing a product b so as promised, after two days, the product actually uh, were received by the customer. So definitely, the customer will be very happy. Uh, but yes, sometimes when we buy things online, there are things that we cannot control. For example, last time I bought a phone case. So a very nice phone case, I think 25 ringgit. So what happened when the product came to my house? Uh, the phone case was so small, it can only fit my key. So I don't know what happened to my, my purchase. So the size of the phone case is smaller than what I expected. So there are things that, that we have to, to what call that, uh, bear in mind when shopping online. Okay, these outcomes are also present within empirical research into the use of digital technology which shows the overall satisfaction with digital technology performance has a positive effect on the intention to continue the use. Okay, number two, customer satisfaction and service quality, CSSQ. The concept of customer satisfaction and service quality are both defined as being customer judgment is solely based on the customer judgment berdasarkan kepada persepsi pelanggan. Okay. Customer satisfaction is a judgment that a product or service feature or the product of service itself provided or is providing a pleasurable. The meaning of pleasurable is memuaskan hati. You are feeling very happy when you receive the services or the product. So the product is as what you expected. Seperti mana yang kita hendakkan. Bukan seperti mana, sesuatu yang berbeda. Pleasurable uh, level of consumption related fulfillment. Service quality is a judgment about an entity overall excellent or superiority. So it's very important for any company, any organization, either it's uh, online or not online, to actually uh, bear in mind that the customer is your biggest asset. So the most important thing for you is to actually satisfy the customer. Give what they want. Because if you are tend to actually uh, deviate from what you promise and then 
the level of satisfaction will also deviate and sometimes it will affect the overall performance of the organization or company. The concept of electronic service quality, ESQ, has been developed for digital channels and is the extent to which a website or other digital channel facilitate efficient and effective shopping, purchasing, and delivery. However, as the internet has developed, ESQ has been redefined as a judgment of the service experience provided in the online marketplace. That means pengalaman, experience when you do your online shopping, when you do your online business. So the judgment is based on your experience. Sometimes you have, a uh, company have very good product, very good, uh, what you call that, services, but their website is not as friendly as it should be. So people sometimes, yeah, you have great product, but at the end of the day, you cannot actually purchase it well. And sometimes you didn't get what you want. So at the end of the day, the satisfaction of the customer that use the website of that particular company will not as high as, as, high as expected. Okay, I do apologize. Sometimes my pronunciation is not that good. It's, uh, I think, around 5 p.m. here in Malaysia. And uh, yeah, 5 p.m. is very, very, uh, what do you call that? Masa yang sangat-sangat mencabar for us here in Malaysia. Okay, the exact relationship between service quality and satisfaction is uncertain. Tidak ada ketahui. Some researchers argue that service quality leads to a judgment of satisfaction. Yes, some researchers beranggapan berpendapat bahawa service quality leads to a judgment of satisfaction. Para suraman. Okay. While others state that in fact customer satisfaction comes before a judgment of service quality. That means uh, some customer, they already satisfied with the product or services before they, they, they actually purchase the product. There are cases like that. But normally, what I believe is that the satisfaction will come after you receive the product and you actually uh, manage to get the product as promised by the company or the organization or services. For example, if I went to a hotel, I tend to have a very nice stay or vacation there. But instead, I got a very, very unpleasant memories at that hotel. So definitely my satisfaction, my judgment of satisfaction will not be high for that particular hotel. However, a key difference is that customer satisfaction is transaction and time specific while service quality is a long-term attitude. This means service quality is considered to be source of differentiation and competitive advantage for services. This was uh, from Geese and Code 2000. Number three, e-service. So what is e-service? Digital channel provide remote rather than direct delivery. Any interaction with the product or service is technology mediated and is similar to a service experience. Last time I still remember 2000, year 2000, 2005, when you want to buy some groceries, so you have to physically be in the store, selecting all the, the things that you want and pay physically. But nowadays you can shop even at your own house in your comfort so far without having physically go. If you want to buy some fish, for example, I can't imagine that 20, when I can't imagine 20 years ago. Uh, I think if I talk to myself 20 years ago, I said that okay, in 2023, I can buy fish at the comfort of my house without ever going to the market. I can select the fish, I can select anything uh, using my handphone. I don't think my 2000 self would believe that, but that's the case here. I mean, uh, I believe Dr. Farah Wida have the experience. I mean, uh, sekarang boleh beli apa-apa dekat Panda, right? Uh, we have these apps, Food Panda, very nice. 
I can buy anything there. So that's the, the extent of technology nowadays. So e-service encompasses the deeds effort of performance whose delivery is mediated by information technology and is delivered through self-service technology, SST. So SSTs include both on-site options such as supermarket self-service checkout. So sekarang uh, in Malaysia, I believe also in Indonesia, there are already supermarkets that they don't have any cashiers. You just go to the counter, you just self-service, uh, check out and then you can pay and you move on without any uh, interaction with the cashier and even amazon now they are actually introducing uh, you don't have to bring money using the what you call that uh, apps from your handphone you can shop at the uh, amazon store and without having physically uh, interact with the customer uh, sorry the customer service or the cashier at the store so an online channel access in home when using SSD, customers are uncertain about the consequences of making mistakes which can reduce both trust and loyalty. Yes, sometimes when we do online purchases, there are scammers there and also there are mistakes that were done by the customer. Sometimes we add one zero behind the actual price and that will be a very, very hectic thing. I mean, uh, to get uh, the money back is very, very hectic. So that's why when we do uh, our online purchases, we have to very, very be careful so that the amount that we pay is exactly as it should be. So e-service, in addition, online purchase increase the intangibility of goods is, as there is limited customer capacity to make a direct assessment through feel, touch and detail visual inspection. Yes, that's the, I mean, the kelemahan of these uh, online purchases whereby we cannot actually see the goods compared if we go to the store we see it we look at it we can touch we can feel it rather than uh, online where everything is based on picture that does that not necessarily represents uh, the product or services According to signaling theory, in such situation, individuals will make use of intrinsic uh, cues or signal to make a quality assessment. This means that the digital marketing mix elements such as product brand, place, pricing, and communication act as signal of quality to reduce uncertainty and risk to increase transactional trust. So the company have to use uh, what you call that, uh, have strong product brand, uh, pricing and communication with the uh, sales representative in order to make sure that the customer will trust their services. Otherwise, when we don't have trust in doing the business, I mean, uh, it is very bad for the company and uh, the company will tend to lose a lot of customer and of course, lost their revenue. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Number four, expectancy disconfirmation theory, EDT. So service quality and satisfaction measures are based on expectancy disconfirmation theory, which proposes that customers make assessment of product performance based on a comparison of expectation and perception. Apa yang kita jangkakan dan apa yang kita terima. What we expect and what we receive. Customer expectations are believed from before services delivery that serve as standard or reference point again, which perception of actual services are judged. For example, if uh, I want to spend my night in a hotel, so there are things that I expect. For example, comfy bed, very nice and clean bed, and things like that. So I book online. But when I arrive at the hotel, it's not as... I expected, I mean, uh, there are a few things that are not there and uh, the bed is not that comfy, it's uh, dirty, the room are dirty. So not as being marked online. So that's why uh, it is very important for the service provider to actually promote or what you call that, tell the customer what they are really going to get 
and not uh, promise if in Malay we say bulan and bintang and things that are not uh, in their capabilities. This means that online customers are making constant comparison between e-service they expect and the e-service they are receiving. So each comparison result in either there are three cases. Case number one, situation number one, a positive disconfirmation where the service experience exceed the expectation. This is very good. I mean, the service that will provide or product that will provided by the company or organization exceed what the customer want. So the, this is the number one is very good. Number two, a negative is confirmation where service is below standard that expected. Uh, this is a very big problem for the organization where the customer feel they don't get what they want or they were promised for. And number three, a zero is confirmation where expectations standard are met. That means uh, what they perceive they will have, they receive it. That's it. No extra, I mean, uh, wow factor from the organization or the company. Upon completion of the transaction, the customer would be either satisfied or dissatisfied and would make a service quality judgment. So at the end of the day, the most important thing is for the organization or company to make sure that their product or services will satisfy their customer and the customer will come again, repeat again, uh, in Malay terms, we said uh, repeat semula, yeah. repeat order. I think that's a very common term here in Malaysia. So that uh, their business will grow and sustain. Okay, wait. Where is my... Okay. The service quality literature identifies four reasons for mismatching, expectation and perception. So a mismatch between performance and promises is the most complex gap to close. So yes, the most complex gap is to match, to have a match between performance and promises. Sometimes you can promise a lot of things, but we cannot fulfill it. So, and because of the gap, the customer will not feel satisfied and then thus we lose a lot of customer especially during the what do you call that the the uh, on, during the online era whereby uh, some companies here yeah, they tend to actually uh, purposely sometimes uh, promoting things that they are not capable of doing just for the sake of having one time customer and i think that is not a good thing to do in your business Expectation can be raised as a result of not only promotional material but also through brand positioning and previous experience that the customer has gained offline. Thank you so much. That's my presentation. I do apologize. Uh, mohon maaf atas segala kekurangan yang Mbak Novita. Jadi terima kasih. Assalamualaikum. Salam sejahtera. Thank you so much for Dr. Sadon and from University Malaysia Terengganu. Yes. <laughs> okay. And then we will go to the next session, question and answer session. For our audience, if you want to ask question from for speaker, you can raise your hand or you can write in the room chat. Thank you. Okay, uh, this is question from audience in the YouTube from Ms. Dia Rahmi. This question for all speakers today. Is there any regulation that as the rule which is having the guidance from the Department of Trading and Finance from Malaysia and also Pakistan and Indonesia University? If there is a buyer from other place by using online, thank you. Uh, okay, I think I have answered uh, the question on the uh, meeting chat. But yeah, uh, yeah just to um, share the, the, the answers here. Yes, uh, there's a regulation uh, in place that govern online trade and commerce, uh, including those related with the consumer protection, uh, data privacy, 
uh, cross border transaction okay for example if you buy from shopee for example you can buy uh, uh from china you can also buy i think i have experience uh, buying uh telekom or in uh indonesia you call it as a mukena right mukena or something like that so, uh i've bought uh telekom from indonesia so yeah the transition is allowable and yeah definitely you need to before you make transaction you need to uh register on that platform first and you have you must be verified first to make the uh, purchase, uh the transaction uh, in malaysia so we, we we do have that kind of regulation Thank you, and I think it's very clearly from Professora, maybe from Pakistan or Indonesia University, from Dr. Amena or Dr. Sadon and Dr. Ahmad. Okay. Uh, Pak Ahmad, yes. you, will, you will answer or no? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I didn't hear your voice. I'm so sorry. It's okay. <clears throat> Please, uh, about your, uh, the question is? In Zoom chat. Oh, Zoom chat. Uh, okay. Number one. Uh, paling bawah. Paling bawah, ya. Yeah. Yang mana sih, Nav? Dia Rahmi YouTube. Oh, Dia Rahmi ya. Oke. Okay. Uh, dia Rahmi, is there any regulation? This is. Yes. Oke. Okay. Oke, okay, I want to replay. Huh? Yang paling bawah sendiri, Pak. Yang What? how to deliver to the... Oh, top. no, no, no. Eh. No. That's a question for... Pakistan and Malaysia standard test. Yeah. Uh, about the question, uh, is there any regulation that has the role which is having the guidance from the Department of Trading and Finance from Malaysia and also Pakistan and Indonesia if there is a buyer from other place by using online? Okay, I want to read apply about uh, the question from Tia Rahmi. Uh, depending on the buyer will buy goods using what the courier or delivery services where, which they use because it has its own regulation courier, logistic finance such as Post Indonesia, JNA, JNT, etc. They have their own regulation. Like as a tax customs because through custom and exercise inspection whether whether the goods are dangerous goods or not okay thank you miss novita thank you for answering and then maybe from dr amena or dr saiful you will answer it oh for dr Yeah, for answer from Dr. Amena, in Pakistan, we use the Daras PK and Alibaba.com. Okay. I think in my case, uh, the answer for me is the same as Dr. Farah mm -hmm. Sama, so sama seperti Dr. Farah Okay. Yeah, thank you. And then we will go to the next question. This is for our speaker. If we want to open a business, but I am a student and have many organizations, how do we divide our time? Because it's very confusing for me and do we have to do focus on doing business in order to have a smooth business like the other or is just a side business? This is question from Ms. Sukamto. Thank you. I'm ready right in the room chat. Maybe we will answering first. Okay. 
Oke. Okay. Oke, okay. uh, Miss Novita, thanks for uh, the question is number one ya. Yeah. From from uh, from Miss Novita, if we want to open a business, but I am a student and have many organization, how do we divide our time? Because it is very confusing for me. And two, we have to focus on doing business in order to have a smooth business like the others or is it just a side business okay miss novita i want to uh, reply about your question uh, this when we have two activities at one time we must be able to manage time as well consistency uh, start from now and uh, focus uh, you can share the business and you can uh, you can uh, export expertise in uh, your uh, business and then you can expertise in your uh, study and you can uh, share the time and you can uh, manage about uh, your time about uh, two activities at one time so we must be able to manage the time is well about business and then about your study okay thank you Ms. thank you for answering maybe from another speaker uh, okay i will add on uh, some of the tips uh, on how you can manage time uh, if you interested to do business uh, while studying Okay, so um, I think the most important thing is you need to prioritize. Okay, so you need to identify which activity are most important and allocate your time accordingly. Okay, which is uh, you want to focus on your business first or you want to focus on your study first. So uh, you have to choose which one is more prioritized. And if you still want to do both, okay, uh, I think I would suggest on do some schedule. Okay, uh, do a schedule. For example, to make a daily or weekly schedule that includes times uh, for each activities. Okay, for example, two hours for do some uh, marketing uh, process and two hours to make your assignment. Okay, and then I think, yeah, delegation uh, is one of the tips. If possible, you need to de delegate the tasks uh, to others. For example, if you're still studying, but uh, you still do your business. So, for example, to post the item or to, I mean, to send the item, maybe you can just delegate the, the, the process to other party, okay? And um, try to eliminate uh, distraction, okay? Uh, because you want to focus on both uh, things, right? Okay, two things. So, uh, so make sure that you focus on only two, okay? And then uh, it's supposed to be balanced uh, because when sometimes... We, uh, it's good if you can do business during your study time and yeah, be balanced. Uh, don't focus too much on the business uh, without having a uh, look at your studies. But in UniKL, uh, I would say that uh, we have that kind of, uh, we call it as a, a genesis program, okay, where, in, uh, where students are exposed with all the business opportunities. And even one of the, our subject also um, is really focused on technopreneurship, okay, which a student need to do uh, sales and, uh, I mean, selling item, okay, as one of their assignment and project in the course. Um, but I would say that there's uh, no problem, actually, if you can focus uh, with these two uh, things okay business and also studying i think especially if you are in that uh, program for example you are degree in uh, business for example so if having your own business is really help you to understand the process of learning itself right uh, so i think it could be no problem but uh, you 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 really need to manage your time uh, effectively Right, that's, that's all from me. 
Thank, thank you so much for Dr. Farah Havida. And then we still have a fourth question uh, for each speaker. Uh, for first question, this is for, for Mr. Ahmad Zainuri. As we know, digital business is famous business for now. I'm little confused about transportation online, like uh, Gojek, Grab, and any other. In small city, many people not know about this application, and sometimes have a, they all have a problem with Gojek driver user. Mm -hmm. And then, how we as founder of transportation online mm -hmm. promote to small city about this? So, mm -hmm. in the future, not have any issue again for conflict any driver. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much for your question, Miss Novita. I want to uh, re reply about uh, your question. Uh, how we as founder of transportation online promote to small city about this? So in the future, not have any issue again. Okay. With marketing communi uh, communication through smartphone. Even small children are now also using smartphone for gaming, uh, look at TikTok Live, and etc. So they know about social media such as Facebook, such as Instagram, and social media, uh, etc. in Indonesia. I think all of people in Indonesia recognize both Facebook and Instagram and social media, etc. because information technology until to all of Indonesian people with Facebook ads, Instagram ads, founder of transportation can promote to all region of Indonesia. Okay, thank you, Miss Novita. Please. Thank you for answering. And then the next question, this is for Dr. Saiful Sadon. How to minimize error in online delivery of goods if, if too many people buy on online platform? Thank you. Oke, okay, terima kasih Mbak Novita. Soalannya begitu mendalam sekali. Oke, okay, uh... sebetulnya amat mudah sekali karena sekarang ini kita ada sistem. We have do we do have system whereby we can monitor the progress of our purchase. For example, we buy a package for a product from China, for example. We can actually monitor the progress of our product where and when, any time of the day. So uh, by using this system, we can actually minimize uh, the probability of having our product or things that we buy uh, being shipped to other parts of the world. Yes, I do have cases whereby I buy a product from China and it end up in South Korea. But it's a very, very remote case. Whereby I think we can say that around 99% of uh, purchases that we're doing uh, that were, were done by people in on, using online system, uh, inshallah, will arrive at their respective places. So I think it is best for any company to have a very solid system that we, they can use to monitor uh, the what you call it, transaction or the pergerakan of the product that they sell and make sure that the product will actually, in the end of the day, uh, being received by the respective customer. Inshallah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for Dr. Saiful. And then this is question for, for Dr. Farah Wahida. Uh, how to apply intelligent marketing like this to do at elderly or to those who are less responsible to technology? Thank you. All right. Uh, the question is about on how we, I, I think I would say that how we can educate or how we can uh, assist okay, elderly to uh, do online transaction, right? Um, some uh, elderly, they are not really trust, okay? That, that's uh, issues on trusting issues, okay? Trust, trust issues on the uh, having um, transaction online. Even uh, my parents also have problem in uh, trusting certain. Uh, for example, they ask me to buy uh, to uh, to to pay for the bills. Still, they want it to be uh, the receipt. Okay, the 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 uh, printing uh, receipt. Okay, so uh, I would say that sometimes is is quite difficult to uh, create that kind of uh, trusting issues to the elderly. But uh, by having a good um, exposure to them, okay, 
I would say that uh, in Malaysia, for example, we have uh, one of the program that we promote uh, elderly uh, to have uh, the technologies uh, exposes to the, to uh, to them. Okay, uh, we, we tried. Uh, we put some awareness on how this technology really help, and uh, yes, but sometimes uh, they don't have actually the devices. Okay, but I would say that by having a good uh, education, okay, uh, I mean, I mean uh, a good program of awareness or maybe the exposure on how the uh, telling them the benefit of using the technology, it could be one of the initiative uh, to help the elderly to um, expose and engage with the uh, technology. So I would say that maybe it will be a, a, a program in order to educate the elderly to use their devices or the technology. Thank you so much for answering, Doctor. I think it's very ans clear answer from all professor. I guess no one else, uh, I think don't have no more question again from our audience. May I continue to the next session? Time for take a picture. Yes, for this session will be handled with Miss Fabry. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Miss Mavita. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, for those who have an activities the camera, you can active the camera first so we can take photos together. Baik, bagi peserta yang belum mengaktifkan kameranya, bisa diaktifkan terlebih dahulu agar kita bisa mendokumentasi acara pada siang hari ini. Baik, saya hitung dari satu, dua, tiga. Oke, okay, once again. One, two, three. Oke, okay, thank you. I will return the event to Miss Novita. Uh, thank you so much for Miss Webby. Before I close this event, maybe from another speaker, we'll say something before or no, it's okay. Okay. Okay, finally, we come to the end of webinar today. We would like to say thanks again for all the speaker for Dr. Amena Sipgatulo from Karachi Institute Economy, Pakistan, and Dr. Farah Mida Moh Abu Bakar from University Kuala Lumpur from Malaysia, and to the Honorable Dr. Muhammad Saiful Iswan Bin Sadon from University Malaysia Terengganu. Yeah, thank you for wonderful information. Thank you for sharing your knowledge. We hope this information will be beneficial for our audience. And I hope we can meet again in another event in the future. Also, I would like to thanks for all participants for attending this webinar and making this even more interesting. At least we hope to have more collaboration in the future the webinar for today and here we hope to see you soon thank you and have a nice day for our speaker and audience participant thank you okay thank you thank you so much for everyone thank you so much and goodbye thank you so much for dr sadun and dr farah Vida. thank you so much <laughs> nice to okay. see you terima kasih mbak Ya, terima kasih kembali. Goodbye, nice to see you all. Okay, I think that's enough for today's event. Uh, thank you, good afternoon.